so what we're doing now is we're actually doing a lot more driver education <laughs> because I'm sure you know on the driver side of things, uh, there's a lot of little tricks out there. You know, you you know that there can be companies that pay, say they pay 70 cents a mile, and a driver will get kind of hung up on CPM, but not get you the miles. You know, there's the tiered pay or Welcome back, YouTube, to the Recruiter Call Channel, where we make the call for you. And in this call today, we're looking at USXL Trucking. All right, good morning. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? I am fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, you know... USXL. What, what's what's that abbreviation for? What what's what's that abbreviated for? <laughs> no, it's just that's just uh, I don't know what uh I don't know what the where the abbreviation for that one came from or what it is. But it's it's just USXL is the name of the company. <laughs> it seems to be no abbreviation for it. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I I I found it funny to myself. Like, huh? Maybe US expedited. Logistics or something like that? I I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, let's. Uh, yeah, I thought all sorts of acronyms for it. And <laughs> just never really, never really had a good answer for it myself. All right. Well, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's get into this, man. So uh, you decided to uh, reach out to uh, reach out to the uh, to the channel, and you want to give us uh, some updates of what's going on with the company since the since the last MT, uh, MTC spotlighted uh, spotlighted the company. All right, so I will let you start. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, introduce yourself uh, and go from there. Let us let us know with uh, let us know what you you USXL is uh, uh, have for us drivers out here. I got you. I got you. So I'm Kyle. I'm our new HR director. Um, I came on at the beginning of this year. And one of the things that I've seen right away that I liked about the company was that they do a lot of things that is very transparent. Um, so through our recruiting process and, and I've seen the recruiting process you kind of hit. And that's why I wanted to reach out to you is because I was like, man, that's just really not a good representation of how we're recruiting now. Um, so what we're doing now is we're actually doing a lot more driver education <laughs> because I'm sure you know on the driver side of things, uh, there's a lot of little tricks out there. You know, you you know that there can be companies that pay, say they pay seventy cents a mile, but and not give a driver you the miles. Will be kind of hung up on CPM, but mm -hmm. not get you the miles. You know, there's the tiered pay, or they pay seventy cents a mile, but it's only the loaded miles. Mm -hmm. So you know, you look at industry average is about fifteen percent of your your miles are empty. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you got guys thinking they're going to make twenty two, twenty three hundred dollars a week, and they're only making sixteen, seventeen hundred because uh, the percentage of their of their wages that they're losing. Right. So the last few months, what we've really done is we've we've kind of switched directions, and we've actually gone to a lot more informational stuff. Um, I've done a really good job and been able to keep our fleet full. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the advertising stuff that we've we've been doing now is is more geared towards education for drivers. Okay. And I was, you know, even as a company, uh, like I worked with a gentleman. His name was John. He really liked our company. He didn't like where we were at on CPM, mm -hmm. and that's completely understandable. And that's something uh, I've I've realized through this is that guys look at things differently. Uh, you know, and if they choose that they don't want to work here, they want to work somewhere else. Uh, I actually sat down with him and and went through like four different lease purchase agreements with him, even though he wasn't going to come to work for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I took the time and and educated him on some things that he needed to be on the lookout for, and actually helped him get into a pretty decent oh. lease purchase program. Which I know, if you've been around long enough, you know that there's not a lot of real good lease purchase programs out there. Like no. a lot of them are really set up for the drivers. No, to no, it isn't. No, <laughs> no, it isn't. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hit and miss with, with some of these companies. Some, some of them is, some of them is winning and then others are losing bid time. But, uh, but yeah, with lease, lease options, uh, lease purchases, 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's really hit and miss right now, especially at this time with the fuel prices and the uh, and the low rates. Yeah, I, 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 you know, myself believe that this is not a good time to go into leasing. You know, but hey, that's that's just that's just my opinion. <laughs> No, I agree with you right now that your best bet is to be, you know, on the back of a company. Uh, three years ago, at least, purchase just might have been a, a phenomenal thing. But we've really, we've really switched directions um, from like, we're still recruiting through Facebook. We're still using that. We're using a couple other platforms as well. Uh, we're working with 160 Driving Academy. <laughs> I've been working hand in hand with those guys over there. Now, we still do require that you, the minimum of two years experience. Uh, but it's another it's another way that we've been able to to reach out and do some driver outreach and okay. really talk to drivers. You know, I've I've spent probably uh, I think I spent an entire day just talking to recent graduates about things to look for in companies and educating them awesome. on you know FMCSA and PSPs and and stuff like that. So we've really switched gears to a more personal touch for drivers. Um, okay. Okay. And you, you obviously, I you you did mention you you did mention that you guys do require at least two years of experience, but uh, but you you opened the door for the new drivers to give them something to think about in the course of their driving career. That when they get to that two year you know two year experience mark, they can consider you guys for uh for for opportunities. Yes, absolutely. And that's so one thing that I noticed that it's really hard with OTR drivers is you have a lot of OTR drivers because there are so many there's so much false recruiting going on yes. in the industry. Everything is about everything's about getting a butt in the seat and, yes. and you know, moving on. Um with us being a little bit smaller and and me being our HR guy, um for me, it just doesn't make sense. And I, business wise, it doesn't make sense to me anyways, to recruit on false promises because the guy's just going to end up being unhappy and quit. <laughs> um, you know, so, and especially here with this company, we've really looked at it and looked at what we have to offer. And I think we stay competitive across multiple platforms. So with our equipment, uh, we, we stay highly competitive with any other company with our equipment, just because of the way we rotate it out. And, and we keep the equipment all brand new. But I think you've, like I said, you've probably been around long enough to know that a lot of times the, the companies with great equipment mm -hmm. also don't come with really good pay. You know? <laughs> um, Ain't that the it, truth. It, it, seems, it seems to be a trade-off. It really does. It seems to be a trade-off for drivers that they gotta, they got to select between optimizing their money or driving, you know, good oh, equipment. Right. And that's something that we've really tried to integrate here where we feel like we can give them the best of both worlds. All right. Where so they can't make that two two thousand plus dollar a week gross and do it in, you know, a twenty twenty three tractor with uh like right now the our average trailer age right now is a year and a half old. All right. All right. So with you being the new uh HR uh HR representative now you you guys is changing changing everything up. Was the two year experience uh requirement was 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 that always or did you guys just recently up it or did you recently down it? Like let's say for example you required a, a year or or y'all required three years. Did which which direction previously we required five. So we we came down. Previously, we required five years. Um, now we will look at we will look at guys from two years. Okay, okay, that, and that's a that that's a good that's a good middle ground. Okay, five years is a stretch, <laughs> but yeah, two years exactly. is a, yeah. yeah, two years is a good middle ground. Um, now that you took it over as as hiring director for uh for the company, how how is the hiring standards? now versus when you took over? I think we've kept our standards pretty much the same. Our owner is very particular about what he wants. You know, he, he's, he looks at it uh, is 
when a when a driver pulls off of our lot to do a road test, they're pulling off the lot and almost three hundred thousand dollars in equipment because he does buy the top of the line tractors, fully loaded, um, and the same thing with trailers. So our standards and what we're looking for as far as clean, you know, clear DACs, clear MVRs, none of that's really changed. Uh, we have done a second chance program. We used to have a lot stricter <laughs> guidelines on job history. Uh, and that's something that I took a lot of pride in with, with going to our leadership, the leadership above me and talking to them about the fact that there are so many companies out here recruiting falsely that what it's doing, it's having a negative impact and it's making the drivers look like they can never stay anywhere. Uh, so that's something that we have changed quite a bit on is we've, we've gone and started working with a lot more drivers who have a really riddled job history. Okay. Awesome. Because on that note, uh, some companies like do require you to only be with a company for like three years. Uh, I'm sorry, three uh, three companies within a year period. But I'm I'm looking at it like, bro, this is trucking. <laughs> you know, I I I know a dri- I know a driver I know drivers that been at ten companies within the you know within the first year because of. Because of what you're saying, false advertisement, false recruiting, false leading, you know, and then they and then, you know, how trucking is now, they using trucking as a trend now. They they using social media, they using social media people to the to, to entice people that, you know, to come into the trucking industry thinking that they're gonna make one thing and then they get there and find out, nah, nah, this this ain't for me. So they end up bouncing from company to company to find that right fit. But then when you do find that company, now they looking at it like, oh, well, we've seen that you bounce from, you know, like five different companies. We can't bring you on. But, bro, this 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 is trucking. I mean, what, what, what do you expect? Exactly. And, and something that we've worked on, and I think and this has been a big help, because I came from the operations side. Um, I actually started out as a part-time forklift driver and work my way up to a terminal assistant terminal manager. And then I took on, took this role on is an HR role. <laughs> and, um, I think that gives me a kind of a different line of sight than a lot of recruiters do. Cause I think a lot of, a lot of recruiters are not ex drivers. You know, my dad is a driver has been my entire life almost. So it gives me a real different outlook on things. It gives me a different way to look at things from a driver perspective. And then with our recruiting process, um, what I was getting at earlier was that we've actually, we've, we're, we're starting the conversation through messenger and then we really want to get on the phone. Like I really want to get on the phone with a driver, um, awesome. and talk and talk details, awesome. details of how our operation works because awesome. you just can't get, there's certain things I understand drivers want in messenger. They want it on paper. Um, completely understand why they want that. They want they want a paper trail to show mm-hmm. what they're going to be making because or of all a digital the or or like a that. digital paper trail, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, they want something to go off of that says, "Hey, here's my proof that you said this." Um, so we do a lot of that, and I'll do a lot of that through text messaging, emails, and mm-hmm. messenger. But we actually spend more time on the front side with drivers now getting down into the nuts and bolts of the operation exactly. um, where we'll show them. Uh, I think for the, in September, I pulled all of our, I pulled, uh, so we have different options. We have one, two, three, and four week out options. Mm-hmm. So I pulled a bunch of different drivers who are on those options, like two from each option mm-hmm. and pulled their consecutive statements from like four weeks, you know, and obviously I blacked out their names and everything. Of um, and we went really transparent and started showing those to the drivers and it gives them an idea of what kind of money they can expect to make, what kind of miles they can expect to run, where they're going to, where they're going to be running. <clears throat> and we just, like I said, we spent a lot more time on the front side instead of getting guys in seats is making sure that we're getting the right guys in seats. And there because you know. of that, uh, I think that it's, I think that we're doing the drivers of service as well as ourselves. All right. Because we're really striving hard to make make the marriage work before it happens, you know. All right. So let's talk uh let's talk pre employment. So somebody uh reach out, you know, reach out to you. Everything goes good and you know, we, we put the check mark 
Uh, what's the uh, pre, what's the pre-employment drug screening? Is it hair follicles or urine or both? We do both. Oh, all right. You know, some of that is a deal breaker for some some of the guys. But let me ask you because that is a real controversy, versatile topic, uh, especially the hair follicles. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they pass the urine. Of course, that don't go on their FMCSA, but they, but they don't, uh, they they don't pass the hair follicle. Uh, is there a way? Because some drivers, you know, I guess they call it cross contact. Like you know, they have a family member that you know smokes a lot, and they just happen to be in that area with them that you know that they necessarily don't smoke and you know it gets you know on their body and their pores and their hairs and all like that they never smoke never smoked a day in their life but yet it shows up because they was around secondhand smoke if that's explainable would you guys give them a chance to explain it and if so would you guys give them a chance to come in and drive for you I think we would. Um, it's going to be a situation by situation case, obviously. Um, but it's definitely something that because we are getting, we've been just so upfront, you know, right. When I talk to drivers, um, probably within the first 10 to 12 messages, because obviously we go through kind of a process is, you know, I want to know where you're at when I'm talking to you, where are you based out of? Um, and the reason I want to know that first is because depending on where you're based out of is going to depend on what kind of home time options I can offer you. Right. Uh, and I know that's super important to guys. So usually we go, you know, kind of where you're based out of, and then we go over home time. Uh, and then I like to get into endorsements because we are, we're a hazmat carrier. So we require all of our guys to be hazmat and tanker endorsed because of what we haul. Okay. Um, so I get into that with guys. Now we can, and we hire, I hire guys all the time without the endorsements. And uh, I actually spend the time myself of helping them go through the study guides, mm-hmm. booking them the appointments. I really just take all the legwork out of it for them. All they got to do is show up. <laughs> and But it, through them, 10 qualifying, you know, five to 10 kind of qualifying questions that we go through, that is one of the things I bring up right away is just, hey, just so you know, we do do urine and hair follicle testing. You know, is if there we anything you, you want? On, yeah, is there anything you want to tell me? <laughs> yeah. Is there is there anything that I might need to know right now before you know we go any further? I don't want you to feel like I surprised you, mm-hmm. um, and I don't like feeling surprised either. There you go. All right. Uh, well, we already touched on. Well, no, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, mileage pay. Uh, let's let's touch on that. Was uh, for you know drivers two years coming in. Uh, is that going to be different mileage pay for them versus a driver that has like five years or more? And if so, what's what's the what's the variance on both? So the only variance we have is the uh, non hazmat non non endorsed versus endorsed. Um, so we'll bring we'll bring guys in at five cents a mile less who don't have their endorsements, and then we will transfer them over as soon as they get endorsed. We'll transfer them over to full scale pay. Um, and our our standards are tight. You know, I know that we have some pretty tight standards compared to some other companies. Um, but because of those tight tight standards, we feel that you know whether you've been here for two years or ten years, uh, we do everything fleet based. That way it's fair across the board to our drivers. So you might be a guy with 10 years experience um, and you might come in at the same, you know, you most likely most of the time you'll come in at the same pay as the guy with, with two to three years experience. Okay. I know that's, I know that's hard for some drivers to swallow um, because they have been out there sacrificing for a long time, but we look at it as we are only taking an upper echelon of drivers. Okay. 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 What? So, so what? So know, so what is the mileage pay? If I if if we need to get that out there. Right now, we're at sixty. Okay. Um, we were. That's not bad. We were. It's, 
we were as high as 66 earlier in the year, um, but we've kind of pulled back a little bit with with some of the you know freight rates and fuel prices. And I, right. I'm sure you stay pretty connected. The freight rates right now are pretty rough. Right, right. <laughs> and then that's something that also uh, we're very careful about how we go up because we don't come down. You know, we might have dropped what we're bringing guys through the door in at right now, but we didn't go to any of our drivers and say, hey, man, things are getting tight. Sorry. Um, right. Once you get to a point, you stay at that point. You never go backwards, which is something that I always thought was pretty common. Uh, but the longer I've been in the industry, the more I've found out that it's it's more common for companies to either starve drivers out and not give them the miles or tell them, hey, man, this is what you're going to make now. Sorry for you. You know, it's funny that uh, that I, I just got finished talking to a driver and we, we was discussing how companies would come to the driver and be like, hey, you know, we we're experiencing, you know, uh, logistical issues, you know, on their side. And it's, a, you know, it's affecting the money and everything. Uh, we would like to offer this and offer that. By taking off, you know, let's say you're making 60, we like to take off a nickel so that you can, you know, so that you can still make a little bit of money. But, you know, so but so that we can, you know, save money. And he he said um, he said when that was presented to him, he said, no, uh, he said he earned the 60 cents. Um, he started off. At, at you know below sixty, he 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 earned the sixty cent, and he felt that he he felt that no, I I, I mean I I understand that we're going through problems. I like the company, that's why I'm still with you guys. But when you start messing with my money, I you know yeah, I'm going to feel some kind of way about that, you know. So um, he told me that he you know after he said no. They started messing with his miles. So at one point he was getting like anywhere between 31 and uh, 3,200 miles a week. Uh, then it dropped down to 2,800 miles a week. Then it dropped down to 2,500 miles a week. He said one of his worst weeks was uh, was 1,500. And he, he said he couldn't. He said, he said to himself, like, I, I, I know what you guys are doing. <laughs> so he went back to yeah, him. Exactly. He went back to him and he was like, look, man, if if you guys are gonna do that, there, there's no point in me even being here. Because I mean, I, I thought I was one of your best drivers or good drivers. Never give you no problems, no issues, nothing like that. But yet you uh, start messing with, you know, start messing with my mouse because I didn't, because I didn't uh, take the, the the new offer that you gave me for the, uh, for the mileage rate. So it's good to hear yeah. that you, you know, it's good to hear that you won't do that to the driver, you know? No. And we, we, I think the biggest thing is we really try to be a company that is good for drivers overall. Um, because, you know, from like my experience, um, uh, I played hockey as a kid with guys who play in the NHL now. Um, and my dad was never there. It was always, you know, uh, promise to get him home, promise to get him home. And it never went through. Uh, so I think some of my personal experience, uh, along with our owner's view on things, I think it's just been a really, a really good mesh. Uh, between what the company already seen and then some of my personal experience for us to go and and do a lot of outreach with drivers, um, whether it be making sure we're taking care of our drivers here, um, recruiting just in in an insanely transparent fashion. You know, it's it's really it's humbling at times when you talk to a driver um, and you go through you know what story they got going on in their personal life and sometimes. Uh, I think a lot of times guys in the office and especially with leaders, they forget uh, that, you know, a guy might go three weeks without seeing your kids. And, and that's just, that's a sacrifice that unless you've made it, you can't understand. Um, 
And and I've personally made that sacrifice. So I think mm-hmm. the, the outreach we're doing with these guys is just, I think it's really good overall for the drivers. And I think it's good for the company as well because it gives, it's giving us a positive, a positive name out there for being a driver's company. Because there's a lot right. of companies that, that claim to stay there for drivers. And then when the rubber meets the road, you know, you have like the guy you just talked to, they're taking money away from him mm-hmm. or starving him out. Um, that's just not how we operate. You know, we're going to, we're going to take care of the guys that we have here. And, and we might be sometimes a little bit slower on, cause we do uh, market-based pay increases. That's how we do it. We watch mm-hmm. the market, uh, and give our entire fleet a pay raise. You know, we give our entire fleet three pay raises at the beginning of this year. Because that's where the market was trending. And we know that we have good drivers and we want to keep them. All right. All right. You know, where we, wh- might, we might be a little a little slow on that on the front side, mm-hmm. uh, but it prevents the backside stuff like you're talking about. All right. That's what's up, man. All right. What about y'all uh, trucks? What's, what's y'all equipment uh, that you guys offer? And what are they governed at? So we're governed at 67 right now. Um, we've actually been looking, we have 2021 through 2023 Freightliner Cascadias. That's what the entire fleet is currently. Uh, and we've been looking into changing over to a 70 mile an hour governor. We just haven't made a final decision on it yet. Now, you know, there's a lot of talks on speed limiters. Still, a, still a foggy thing with me, but I guess the little pieces that I'm putting together is that the government is uh, actually it's going to be taken out of the company's hands as whether where the truck can be limited. I mean, limited at. Is that true? I mean, am I speaking correctly on that or 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 not? Or would you or would you think about that? That is the whispers that I've heard as well. Um I've heard that government is looking to mandate certain things that will take it out of the company's hands. Um, and, you know, that's something that that really none of us can, you know, I can't do anything about that if the right. government comes in. Because I've heard five is, is what the government's wanting to look at, is no tractors running over 65 miles an hour. Right. Um, personally, personally, I don't think it's what's best. Uh, I think when you put a guy in a 65-mile-an-hour 80,000 pound tractor and you put him in an area where everybody's running 80. Uh, I think that's unsafe. I think you're putting the driver in a bad situation, but you know, if the government comes down with those laws, that's, we got to kind of maintain that. And the reason why we have it governed where we do is we do a ton, a ton of driving between like St. Louis and Eastern Pennsylvania. And I'm sure with your years of experience, you know, you know, out West, yeah, you get into the 70 and 80 mile an hour zone. Um, but we do a lot from St. Louis East and a lot of those speed limits right are in that 65 to 70 mile an hour range. So we figure um, we're giving our guys a good shot. And we also have uh, the speed, the pass smart option on mm-hmm. our tractors as well. That way, if they are behind the guy, say doing 65, uh, they can step out and jump up to 72 and get around him. Okay, that's what's up. Driver cam? Uh, nothing facing our drivers, only only road-facing cameras. We, you know, that's these guys' house. We got guys who stay out for four, four months. I think a lot of guys who stay out for like four months at a time. <laughs> you know, that's his house. We, there's none of our business. Yeah, can't do that no more. <laughs> I remember those. I remember those days. Four, five months out at a time. Yeah, don't. Yeah, can't do that no more. Um. All right. So we know that and there's. We and we, we don't expect that out of anybody. You know, like I said, our longest timeout requirement is four weeks. That's the longest that we require. But you know, like I said, that's just we got guys who like running like that, and, and you know, we're fine with that. And we just try to give them. Like I said, we try to make sure that we give them their privacy. All right, all right, all right. So we already know that you guys offer lease opportunities. Uh, without uh, without going into too much detail, what what what's some of your lease opportunities that you guys have to offer for for some drivers? Right now, we are not offering lease at all. Okay, uh, 
we've looked at, uh, with the market right now, kind of like what me and you were talking about earlier, uh, is a leadership group. We sat down in in the lease option right now. We think is is a bad bad choice for a driver, um, and we just didn't want to put ourselves in a position where we're taming our own name or putting a driver in a bad position right now. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So I don't like, uh, you know, me being the driver. I'm not a fan of the Northeast. Can't get me up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, do you guys force dispatch uh, your drivers up there? And if you do, do you guys pay a little bit extra for drivers going into like, you know, New York, New York City, the boroughs and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. So we got a $200 incentive pay anytime that you have to go up in any of those areas, any of the boroughs, New York City. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of times we take a lot of feedback from our drivers. So uh, if we take some, say we take a broker load, that's not one of our customer loads. Um, obviously, we give the guy the $200 incentive pay. He gets to the delivery in New York City and he says, holy shit, man, this is crazy tight and sends us some pictures. Uh, we put it on a never run again list. Um, awesome. <laughs> Because we, because the broker, the broker and the and the dispatcher to be like, yeah, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. But then when the driver gets there, like, yo, bro, this no, this this ain't it. Dang, this ain't gonna happen. This ain't gonna do it. We're gonna have to make a uh, make make other arrangements. <laughs> That's what's yeah, up. Yeah. So our dispatchers, our dispatchers work closely with the drivers, and actually, we we listen to the driver feedback. Um, because we know how strict we are about our equipment. So the best thing we can do to ourselves is if, if we got a guy, we, we say that we're hiring top of the line drivers, you know, we're hiring the cream of the crop. Well, if you think you're hiring the cream of the crop, then the best thing you can do is you can listen to those guys. Um, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. So we actually take their input very, very seriously. And, and we actually, we have a list of, of runs that we will not make. Right, all because right. Because we know what kind of it's the driver. Is. Well, man, hey, I, 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 bro, awesome conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back, feel, uh, feeling all this, soaking all this information in, and definitely it will be, uh, shared out. And I do appreciate you reaching out, uh, uh, to the Recorder Call Channel and, and, uh, and you know, giving us a chance to hear what you guys got to offer, man. Uh, pet and rider policy. Uh, do you guys have it? And how young that I can bring my rider? 12 years old on the rider, uh, free to you on the first day. I've actually helped arrange some travel for drivers, wives or girlfriends or whatever that ride with them to get them to St. Louis and, and do all that pet policy. We do have a no pet policy. Okay. Okay. Do you guys uh do you guys accept SAP drivers? I I know you talked about uh how strict uh your company is, uh, but do you guys accept SAP drivers? Case by case scenario. All right. Um, so it's never it's never just a no right off the bat. It's something that uh I work with the driver on. I talk to him, I find out, you know, what it is, what happened, you know, maybe you never know. And that's why I think we do a good job of not just saying nope to anything because you, you never know what happened in somebody's life. So we never want to take a snapshot of a piece of paper and go, yeah, this ain't the guy for us. Uh, right. We want to get to know the guy. That's, that's why we pushed for the more phone conversations. Is I kind of want to get to know you personally before, before we hire you. Um, and so with the SAP, it's the same thing. You know, it's case-by-case case scenario where we're talking and, and getting a feel for the guy and, uh, you know, make a call from there. Awesome, awesome. Do you guys have any um, sign-on bonuses? We do. Um, it just depends on, on what time of year. So, like, right now, the answer would be no. Right now, I'm only sitting on one tractor. I only need one driver right now. Okay. So. Yeah, I actually we we haven't done any recruiting uh, until the video you just seen. We hadn't really done any recruiting for about two months prior to that because I actually had, had built a wait list of drivers who were wanting to join us. So we, you know, we stopped any recruiting effort. Um, and as we've needed drivers, I've just went 
been able to go to the wait list, and that's a that, that's a wonderful feeling. All right, all right. Well, go ahead and uh, let the drivers know how they can get in contact with you. Um, uh, Facebook, all that other good social media stuff, and uh, and definitely leave me the inform you know, text me all the information that you want me to put in the description box. And uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the for the great conversation and uh, good information. No, thank you, man. I seen your video and I got super excited. I was like, this is really, really awesome that there's somebody out here doing this stuff uh, besides me, because <laughs> I really, and it, I think it'll mean more from the, from coming from you than it does for me. Because e even if I'm trying to help you and you're not working here, you can still have that, you know, back of your mind. Oh, this dude is trying to recruit me. So uh, I think the work you're doing is fantastic, man. I was a huge fan of it. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right, go in and uh, leave your information right quick. Yeah, this is Kyle with USXL. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, you can visit us on our Facebook page. It's USXL. We got website. It's GoUSXL.com. And, of course, I'm always available. I try to make myself available from drivers from about 6 a.m. until midnight Central Time. Uh, and you can text or call me at 636-236-7015. All right, there you have it. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's next?